Hi guys and welcome to my channel. Today's video I'm going to be giving you all of my fake tanning tips to keep your fake tan lasting for about two weeks. I'm trying to make it as low maintenance as possible because for me fake tanning is something that I do not like doing. I love being fake tan, like I feel so much more confident but I just do not like the process of it. So I thought I'd share with you today um, all of my tips to try and make it last a little bit longer so you have to do it a little bit less. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. So I'm filming in as much natural light as possible to show you like actually how fair I am because I am very, very pale. I almost feel like I'm invisible sometimes because I'm so fair. And I'm not saying that if you're this fair, you have to fake tan or anything, but I just feel better when I'm a little bit more fake tan. And as it is now coming into the spring, I will be tanning over the winter. I don't bother that much unless we've got like an event or something planned. But now it's spring and summer's on its way. I definitely will be tanning quite regularly. All the products that I talk about today, I'll leave them linked in the description box below. So first up in the bath, I used my Coco and Eve exfoliating mitt. So I just use this with my regular body wash, applied it onto the mitt and then scrubbed all over my body whilst I was laying in the bath and then let my skin just kind of come off and soak in the bath and yeah, a bit gross, but it does work. I find a lot better in the bath. My skin afterwards just feels so much smoother than if I do it in the shower. So first tip is to exfoliate and do it in the bath if you have a bath. If not, the shower is also fine. Um, this is quite a coarse exfoliating mitt as well. You can buy like exfoliating gloves and stuff. You can buy all different types of exfoliating things, but I don't use any product to exfoliate. So that is one key point. I don't put any product on here to exfoliate. I literally use my body wash and the exfoliating mitt. Uh, the reason I've used this Coco and Eve one is because I actually have a whole set of Coco and Eve to show you today. So that's why I've gone for this mitt and it's worked really nicely. It's very quick, like when you rub it in, it you can feel it exfoliating straight away. And I love that feeling of like freshly scrubbed skin. So next up in preparation, I actually don't shave. So when I say I don't shave, I do shave my legs regularly, like I probably do them a couple of times a week. Um, but if I'm just gonna fake tan, so say I fake tan, today's a Friday morning, so I already shave my legs on like Tuesday, so they are now stubbly, but I don't shave them again just before fake tanning because I find if I shave my legs, the tan just does not stick onto my legs if they're freshly shaved. So what I actually do is I leave my stubbly legs and I fake tan over that. And then the next day or whenever I wash the fake tan off, I then go over with my razor, but I do it so gently over the top. I don't, you know, scrape the razor up my leg um, or under my arms or anything. Um, I do it very gently and always make sure that I've got a fresh razor blade on. I just find that glides over the skin a lot better. So it's not gonna take your fake tan off. So yeah, the reason I do that is, like I said, it is just because I find that if I shave before I tan, my tan just doesn't stick to my sort of skin. But this may be different for you. These are just the tips that I do that helps with my skin. I'd say my skin is a little bit sensitive. Like I feel like it doesn't actually like fake tan that much. Um, but I still put it on it because I like the way it looks. So next up, when I get out of the bath, um, I then put on some moisturiser. It doesn't matter what moisturiser that you use. Like probably not like an, a real oily moisturiser, but like I use a cream-based moisturiser. So whatever I'm trying out or using at that time is what I'll put on. So this is the current moisturiser that I'm using and it is the Sen Spa Nourishing Body Butter. So I quite like this one because it's quite like thick. So I rub it in to my my knees, my ankles, and my elbows. And I do also put a little bit just under my arms, like on the edge here, because I find that this section of my body, the tan always goes really funny there. So I always put a little bit there. If you have any particular dry patches on your body, definitely apply some cream onto those as well, because the tan will stick onto dry patches. Okay, so that is me all prepared. So I've had a bath, I've exfoliated, and I've applied my body cream. And now I'm going to start putting the tan on. And then when the tan is all developed and I've washed it off and I've come back, I will then talk about all the tips for prolonging the tan. So the tan I'm gonna be using is the Coco and Eve Fake Tan, which I really love. I use this all of last summer and it just gives you a really nice color. Like it's not orange, it smells good. 
and I just really like the way it applies. So this kit comes with the little exfoliating mitt, then you get the application mitt in here, then you get your Coco Neve Sunny Honey Barley Bronzing Foam, I've got mine in shade dark. Then in here I also have the little brush, which is going to be another tip of mine I'll show you in a minute, um, and this is for applying the fake tan onto your face or anywhere that's you know needs a little bit of buffing in. Right, so I'm going to get my hair out of my face, I've lost my hairband, so I'm going to find that and then I'm going to start applying the fake tan onto my body and just show you some tips I do to make it apply well. Okay so I've put my hair up and I'm all ready to start fake tanning. I've just put this on obviously for the purpose of the video. I wouldn't normally wear this when I'm fake tanning. I would normally just wear a pair of like black pants or something or I'll just do it with nothing on and then I'll put the black pants on afterwards. But whatever I put on after fake tanning I normally just always wear black so it doesn't stain anything. I have like a really thin cotton robe that I normally just throw on after fake tanning and because it's really thin it doesn't make me sweat or anything because the last thing you want to do after applying your fake tan is sweat. So I'll put on a very thin light robe like this until it's dry and then if I'm putting it on during the day I'll then get dressed or at night I'll probably just wear this to bed. So what I'll do is I'll apply it all today and I'm gonna keep it on all day. I'm gonna wash it off this evening before we go out and then tomorrow is when I'll come back and show you the final results. And this should just give you an idea of actually how fair my skin is. And on my face is just very, very fair. I'm just a very pale girl. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take my Coco Neve Sunny Honey in shade dark and I'm going to apply it on to my mitt. This is a mitt with a thumb which makes it really easy to like get around all the different angles of your body. I just put my straps down so that I can show you the colour and how it applies on my chest. And it has a very, very rich fruity scent to it. Okay, so I'm just going to start applying this onto my chest. I've got quite a lot there but I just keep blending. This will get you the most seamless results. This tan also just feels so moisturising when it goes on your body, like it just has a really nice glow to it. So I've just swapped hands and applied a little bit more and I'm just going to put it onto this shoulder. The other reason I really, really like to really blend it in is because today I'm going to be wearing it during the day. So I want it to look okay um, for when I actually go out and I also want it to feel quite dry as well. So I'm just avoiding my face for now because I'm going to be using the face brush to apply it onto my face. Okay, once that's sort of nicely blended in on the top half, I am looking in the viewfinder and doing this. So if you see any bits haven't blended in, I will be going off camera and making sure I do it all properly. I just want to show you the kind of initial colour and how it applies. Also, I don't put loads on for the first go because I feel like once you've put it on and it's dried, you can come back and put a whole other layer on if you want it to be darker. Like about half an hour later, you could put a next layer on. So like I said, just doing small circular movements to get it all blended in and just be really careful around the elbow make sure that's all blended in but I have obviously applied my body cream on there so it shouldn't stick too much to the elbow but it's always here you know I was saying earlier I always feel like I need to apply a little bit of cream just here because this is where it like always goes a bit funny on me okay so I've applied the tan on this arm and as you can see it just blends into a really nice subtle color so I can actually walk around like this and not be kind of all patchy covered in guide color so you can easily wear it during the day so I'm gonna apply it to the rest of my body I'm gonna take this off and apply it properly then I'm gonna show you a little bit of me applying it onto my legs Okay, so I've applied it to that leg. Obviously, I need to go off camera and apply it all properly. So I'm going to go off now, finish all of my tan, and then come back to you and tell you the next step. Okay, so I have fully fake tan my body, not my hands and not my face. We're going to do those in a minute. My body and my legs are all fake tanned. I will go in with another layer on my legs once I dry. So in about half an hour, I'll put a second coat all over my legs because my legs always never take the same as the rest of my body. So on the camera, I suppose I kind of still look um, very pale, uh, but this will develop over time and it is quite hard to show you the exact color on camera. What I'll do now is turn the brightness and everything down completely so you can see the difference between like my face and my neck. So I think now you can kind of see the difference here but I'm now going to show you how I apply it onto my face. So the next tip I have is for my face, the skin on my face. And I always like to moisturise before I fake tan because I just find if I don't moisturise and I put it straight on cleansed skin, 
it clings to all of, not dry patches, but it just clings to the same patches on my skin, which is like around my nose, around my mouth. It always just clings there. So I like to moisturize with whichever moisturizer I'm using at the time. The one I'm using at the moment is the Elemis Superfood uh, Glow Priming Moisturizer. This is a new product that I got on Amazon and I absolutely love it. It's like really discounted on Amazon. I think it's like 26 pound compared to 30 something normally on Elemis, but I love this. It is. It has got like a glowy finish to it and I really like the way it makes my skin look. Obviously the fake tan is going to kind of cover up the glowy look that it gives me. But it still almost primes my skin ready for fake tan. So I do really love it for that. So I have already applied this onto my skin when I got out of the bath. And then now I'm going to take my Coco and Eve fake tan and then the Coco and Eve Deluxe Vegan Kabuki Brush. And I'm going to apply this onto my face. So the next tip is to apply your fake tan onto your face with a brush. I just find this makes it go on so evenly. It's really easy to do. You can get in all of the spaces where you can't get with a mitt. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a little bit of the fake tan on top of the brush. Just like that. Just about that amount on top of the brush. And then I'm just going to start blending it into my skin. Kind of like blob it like this just kind of in each area of my face so I'm like evenly distributing it and then just start blending it in kind of like you would if you wear foundation just blending into the skin and take your time doing this just to make sure that it's all totally blended in and also if you take your time it means that it's not going to look too like patchy also I have a really funny hairline like look at my hairline it is absolutely almost oh my god I look like a cat like that what <laughs> why is that so weird why is my <laughs> oh i've never looked at it at that angle before literally looks like i've got cat ears oh god see this is the thing with filming youtube videos like you have to look at yourself <laughs> and you see all these like weird things about yourself that you've not noticed before but anyway i was just saying about my hairline and it's very strange um but what i was going to say is if you have a strange hairline like me or you have like a hairline that goes you know further back um just make sure you do buff the fake tan like into your hair a little bit i would kind of rather get fake tan like in my hair to make sure that it's fully covered than worry about my hair too much also don't forget your eyelids um and another tip if it bothers you is you can actually put a little bit of uh, vaseline or cream over your eyebrows and that will stop you getting any like orangey tones on them from the fake tan also make sure you get your ears really important otherwise it's a big giveaway if you have still very pale ears and a fake tan face and then just bring the tan all the way down onto the neck and just sort of blend that again around the neck so that there's not any difference in color between your face and the neck as you can see it really clings to my pigmentation this is what happens all the time whatever fake tan I use it always does that so I just find applying the moisturizer before makes it a lot better okay so next up are the hands which I think are always the one thing that people really struggle with to get it to apply nicely because they're always like the tell tan tell tan tail the tell tail the the tell tail of a tan what oh my god that is too many t's they're always a tell tale sign of a tan that's what I was trying to say um, because you know you get it all in between your fingers or the, the hands are like much darker and um, there's just they they always are a telltale so again a brush like this is really really nice to actually buff it into your skin but I always always apply any cream this I'm going to go with my body cream again and I apply it all over my hands like a hand cream and I'm not shy with how much I use I use a lot because I would rather my hands are lighter because I can build them up again than to come out too dark so yeah I just literally apply this all over my hands um all the way into my cuticles across my nails um i have especially dry hands so if you don't have especially dry hands you you won't need to apply as much of this and maybe you'll just apply it on the dry areas like the knuckles but for me i like to apply it all over and also down onto the wrist so i'm kind of like blending in a little bit of where i already put the fake tan here and we'll go back over and blend that in together so with my hands i do tan them in two different ways depending on how dark i want the tan to come out so because i have used a full fake tan on my body i am gonna go in and use the coco Eve with the brush on my hands and buff this in so i'm gonna do exactly the same as what i did on the face squeeze onto the brush just a little bit and then just start blending into my hands kind of like I did 
on my face, but really taking my time to blend this in nicely. Like in between the fingers here, I try and avoid my nails, obviously I do have them done, but at the end I just take a little wipe and wipe over my nails to make sure there's no fake tan on them so I don't stain them. So I'm going down onto the wrist and even though I already applied fake tan to my arms, I now want to like blend together the arms and the hands. Okay, so now we have one fake tan hand and one unfake tan hand and as you can see I've just done a very light coating. I do not want any patchy fake tan so I am very careful to not apply too much tan. So the other way I will also tan my hands is to use a tanning mist like this one. So I will at the end of once I fake tan everything I'll then moisturise my hands and then I'll spray over them with a fake tan like this and just spritz over my hands and this is another way to really easily fake tan your hands without too much tan going on. This is the illuminating facial tan mist but I mean I use it on my hands and my face it's absolutely fine um, and this is a gradual glow one so it doesn't come out too dark at all it comes out really nice on your hands. Right I'll just do my other hand and then I will come back and tell you what I'm gonna do next. Okay so that is my other hand fake tanned and the last thing that I would do now is I'll take this brush and anywhere on my body that feels still a bit sticky or wet I'll use this brush just to buff in that area so that I can get dressed or if I haven't got to go out anywhere, I'll just wear this black dressing gown until I have to go out somewhere. So I'm going to go off now for the rest of my day and I'm just going to let this tan develop. And then before I go out this evening, I'm going to jump in the shower, wash it off. When I wash it off in the shower, I literally only use body wash in my hands. So no scrunchy puff thing that you wash with nothing harsh to wash with, no sponge, literally just the body wash in your hand, rub it together into a nice foam and wash off your body in the most gentle way possible so you're not exfoliating. And then that will just take off the guide color of the fake tan. All of this color you see now on fake tan is a guide color. So when you have a shower, you will see the tan wash off down the drain. Don't panic, that's not your tan coming off, that's what should happen. It's so that you can see where you're putting your fake tan when you apply it. So then once that's all washed off, I'll then go out for my evening, whatever. And then tomorrow morning, it would have fully developed and I'll come back and I'll show you the results. And then I'll talk about how I prolong my tan for two weeks. Good morning, guys. So it is now Saturday. Actually, I say good morning. It half past 12. It's not good morning. We went out last night, we had a really nice dinner and I had a few glasses of wine. So I woke up this morning feeling a bit like bleh. So it took me a little bit of time to kind of get up and get sorted and start filming this video. So this is the results of my tan and I am so happy with it. It looks really natural. It's not orange, it's not too dark. I don't want my tan like really really dark because I find then when it wears off I find it harder to like maintain it but if I did want it darker I could have gone in with a second layer of the fake tan or slept in it overnight which definitely gives you a bit of a darker look. So I've just changed angles a little bit just to show you without too much light on me the actual colour that my tan has come out. So as you can see it's just looking a really nice natural golden brown colour and my legs also looking nice and tanned. So now let's get into the tips of how to maintain the tan. So as soon as I washed it off last night I then applied a whole load of my body butter Definitely don't be shy with applying body butter after you wash off your tan. So a good moisturiser afterwards, and I do really like this one because it is a body butter, so it is thicker and very moisturising. So I applied that last night. So I put the tan on yesterday morning, which was about 11 o'clock when I filmed the video, and then I washed it off at four o'clock. So it was on for only five hours, so I'm really happy with the results from five hours. But like I said, you can leave it on overnight, like apply in the evening and leave it overnight for better results and a darker tan. Okay, so let's talk about maintaining the tan. So my next tip is to always apply moisturiser every single day over your whole body after you have a shower, whether that's morning or night, just apply lots of moisturiser to keep your skin very soft and moisturised and avoid it getting dry because Dry skin will make your tan go patchy and like flake off more, so definitely moisturise. The next tip that I have is to exfoliate every three days. But when I say exfoliate, do not use the exfoliating glove because that's going to remove your tan, it's too harsh. Use an exfoliator, like a product one. But I would always recommend using a sugar scrub rather than a salt scrub. I find salt scrubs are that bit harsher than sugar 
and they tend to wear your tan off. So don't use a salt scrub, go for a sugar scrub. This is one that I would recommend, honestly. This is like one of my favorite ever products. I love this, I've used it for probably a year or so now. This is the Sanctuary Spa Hot Sugar Scrub, self-heating, cleansing and nourishing with kaolin clay and sugar granules. And the fragrance of this is, honestly, it's so good. So inside, um, it looks like this. So as you can see, it's a very, very creamy exfoliator. It's filled with sugar, oils, and it just is so beautiful on your skin. And the, one of the lovely things about it is, like it says, self-heating. This means when you scoop it out and blend it onto your skin, it heats up. So it just feels like a spa treatment in a pot. It's really nice, but it also works so great with fake tans because it's not harsh at all. So you wanna be using this, you could use it gently all over your whole body, but I would recommend using it in the areas where the tan tends to like wear a little bit. So you wanna make it wear off quite naturally. So places like the elbows, the knees, around the ankles, and like I was saying earlier, around here is where I get like a lot of problems, probably maybe because I wear crops like this quite a lot. So it means then it's probably rubbing here. So areas around there I'll exfoliate before the tan starts rubbing off and this just makes a seamless blend from your tan coming off and it stops it looking patchy. So every three days I recommend doing a bit of an exfoliation, a gentle exfoliation is the key. And then on those every three days, apply a gradual tanning lotion. So this is my next tip. So to keep your tan maintained, go in with a body moisturizer that has gradual tanner in it. So you can kind of stop using your moisturizer that you're using to keep your skin from getting dry and start going in with another moisturizer which has got a little bit of fake tan in it. Um, this is one that I absolutely love, and this is a very affordable one. Um, I do have another absolute favorite. It's a little bit more on the higher end, but it is very good. So I'm gonna talk about it as well. So the two that I recommend are the Tan Lux, the Gradual Tanning Lotion. This is beautiful because, I don't know if you can see the texture of it, but it's basically like a milk. So you really can't go lo long. You really can't go wrong when applying this because it's just so milky and it blends in really easily and this leaves your skin glowing like it's it's called illuminating gradual tan lotion and it really does make your skin glow but it is quite a small bottle it's fairly expensive and there are cheap alternatives so this is the cheap alternative and this is the Dove Nourishing Body Care. I've got the medium to dark skin one. I think they do have a light one as well if you wanna just go a little bit more natural with it. Um, and this is the Visible Glow one. This is the only one that I recommend, the Visible Glow. There's a few different ones, but the Glow one is the one that keeps your skin very moisturized and makes it glowy. So by applying one of these gradual tanning lotions every three days, you could do it every day if, if you want, but that's gonna build up quite a darker tan. Um, but every three days I find it just maintains your tan, keeps the original colour that you had and where you have buffed off those dry patches, this then covers back over any tan that might have been removed using that process. So you kind of keep this full body even tan all over. So with these you do need to be really careful when applying them because unlike the mousse tan that I use to tan my whole body, um, you can't see where you're applying this. It's a little bit more harder to apply so you really need to make sure that you are massaging into the skin and covering every area. That is why I do really like the Tan Lux one because it is slightly easier to apply because it has a very thin consistency compared to this one, it's a little bit thicker. But they both do do a very similar thing and the colour results of these are also very similar. They give a nice natural golden tan, they don't suddenly make you go really dark or anything, they are nice. Also, wash your hands thoroughly after using these. So, talking about our hands, this is my next tip. So, I don't know about anyone else, but with my fake tan, the problems that I get are my hands and my face. Like, the tan just wears off of them. Because I'm cleansing my face twice a day, sometimes three times a day, and I'm washing my hands countless times a day. So your tan is definitely gonna wear off of these. So the way that I maintain my hands and my face is by using the face spritz, which I showed you earlier on in the video. I love using a face spritz. Probably every single night, actually, I do my evening skincare routine. So I cleanse, tone, and I moisturize, and then I apply the face tanning mist um, all over my face. And sometimes like onto my neck hair as well because cleansing here also wears it off. So making sure that I have even coverage and then I just go to bed with that on and in the morning you have glowing 
tanned skin on your face again. And then I also do the same thing with my hands. So I give my hands a really good thorough wash. Then I apply some hand lotion or live body lotion. I'd probably just use this one. Um, apply that all over my hands and then I give the tops of my hands a spritz. So I just take the spray, hold my hands sort of like in front of me like this and then I just spray my hands. And then again, it just makes sure that your hands and your face maintain a little bit of tan. So the next thing I will quickly talk about is removing your tan. If you wanna completely remove your tan, again, I recommend a bath if you've got one. Soaking in the bath is gonna make your tan remove so much easier. So if you do have a bath, lay in there for like 10 minutes and chill in the bubble bath or whatever, let the skin all kind of loosen up and then get ready for a deep exfoliation. So the way to remove it is to use the mitt that you originally exfoliated with. So a mitt like this or a hand mitt, anything that's like this rough textured is gonna remove Remove your tan. So apply um, your body lotion or a harsh body scrub, like a salt scrub, but just do be careful with your skin, like don't rub it raw, you know? Um, a mitt like this with a bit of body lotion really should remove it quite easy, especially if you've had a good soak in the bath. So just pop this on and scrub over your skin and eventually all of it should be removed. And then I also find that when I get out of the bath, if there's any areas that still have a little bit of tan on them, while your skin is still damp, take an old flannel, like a toweling flannel, and just rub that over them areas and that flannel will then take off the rest of the tan that's stuck in any areas. And that is why this kit from Coco and Eve is just so good because it comes with everything and even comes in this really cool like waterproof bag. So even if you get a little bit of leaking from your tan, you've got this really cool bag to keep everything nice and clean in there. Um, so in this kit, which I've got, you get your fake tanner, then you get your application mitt, then you get the exfoliating glove, and then you get the little brush, which applies onto your face and hands really nicely. So it is a great kit, and I think by buying a kit, you do like save money as well. So yeah, I do love it for that. And all of these tips put together make your tan last two weeks or even longer. Um, and I do really recommend you trying out any of these tips, even using any one of these tips within your normal tanning routine should help you in some way. So I really hope that you found the video helpful. Like I said, all of the products I've talked about, I'll leave them linked down below. But if you've got any questions, please leave me a comment and let me know if you enjoyed this video or if you found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.